Hello everyone, finally got around doing the tutorial for the Playground version 1. This marks the release of ESP32 Web Project version 1 as well. Uh, what we'll go through today, just a quick intro of the Playground, and then we'll follow up with some further tutorials down the road. Playground does have a one-off fee of $12, but the core library itself is still free to download and use. You can make an account and gain access via the link here. Um, and even if you do already have an account, you can still log in via here. There is also a option at the top as well. So if you don't yet have access to Playground and you're logging for the first time, it will check if you are existing user. And if not, it will prompt you to make a purchase to then gain access to Playground. takes you to a checkout where you can check out and then um, you can kind of proceed with that itself. Once you have made the purchase and the account is made, you'll be emailed over your logins. Well, I have my credentials, so I'm just going to log in and access the playground itself. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick intro for where the options are to navigate in the playground. We'll start with the shortcuts right at the top. Uh, which is accessible by the button itself or shift space. Uh, these can be tapped on or clicked on if you're using a touch interface. Otherwise, you, know, you can you, you can just use the shift and the key itself to access the shortcuts. Top left section here, theme colors. This is essentially responsible for editing all the colors of all the modules and the sections within the application itself. So let's say we want to change the color of the Wi-Fi scan button. Um, we can change its body. And the text color individually. The next section focuses on the logo section. So that includes the icon, the main title and the subtitle. We can change the layout. So you can focus on each of the title aspects, the main and the sub. And then the text code is responsible for the text, for the main title, the subtitle, and also the footer down over here. One thing to note is when you do change these text values, these are not exported as part of the CSS file. So rather you'd have to go into the ESP32 web dot cpp file and update those variable values there instead and the last section is a logo section you can drag and drop your logo on top of here or just click and select the logo from your browser instead file size i mean look um esp32 is gonna have to upload all the files across the bigger the logo the longer the website will take to load so Although you could load a logo of any size, uh, obviously it will take just that much longer. The custom CSS section, not quite yet done. I'm not going to put a timeline on it, so I'm not sure when I'm going to get the chance to finish this section off, but it's, it's in the works. And then once you're happy with your final design, you can generate the CSS file. I'll show you where that file should go in a second. On this side, we've got dark mode, light mode, so you can design individually and differently for both the dark mode and the light mode. And all those settings are generated as a singular CSS file. This is a selector module. And what this essentially does is rather than trying to figure out which settings located over where on the left hand side, you can rather just click on whichever module you want to edit and it will open up that editable module instead. Um, sometimes there's two modules responsible for editing a section. So you'll see two out of two or one out of two, which means there's two sections you can adjust this section, uh, this setting with. Um, okay, so that's a selector module. Hopefully it'll make life slightly easier when you're trying to find uh, where the settings are for each of these sections. Uh, lastly, what we have is a design showcase. And what 
this is essentially is for me to periodically update with a new design which you guys can just click on and make it your own by changing the text values and perhaps the logo section as well um, some of these design showcases so this one doesn't have any custom css this one does have a bit of custom css just required for the spacing and in the future when there is custom css it should appear here and also be editable okay once the design is finalized um, what you'll do is export the css file and within the repository for the wi-fi manager when you do download it inside the data folder you can just replace the existing style.css file and then for the arduino ide case i think the data file is somewhere it's over here so again you just copy it well not copy and replace you could just delete this one and replace it with the one generated by um, the playground itself if you guys got any questions do let me know either via youtube comments or just send me an email at support at esv30web.com so yeah that's all for the playground hopefully it's something you guys enjoy using makes life a bit easier when it comes to design and um yeah i hope i really hope you do like it it's, it's taking me a little bit of time to design and then develop so yeah i'm really hoping you guys like what's been done here and this is just version one so there is a lot more planned and esp30 web is supposed to be more than just a wi-fi manager um i'll talk more about this in a separate video have a good day take care bye